What's going on beautiful people? So I've just got done doing a whole tour of the studios with Matt from Made Ahead Aquatics. Many of you know him, I go to the shop so often, buy stuff from him. So I, I wanted to get him to see the whole whole studio in its entirety and like make a whole tour as well because I've never done a tour with someone else. Anyway, whilst I was doing that, I noticed quite a few bad things with some of the tanks that need addressing. Now I'm not talking about like major things here, but look, for instance, this is the Neon Tetra tank. Thankfully, Matt didn't pick up too much on this, but look, down here, you can see there's all sorts of sort of weird algae gunky stuff. We've got string algae everywhere. I've just added some little snails to this. There's quite a few actually there. Watch out the way, fish. Come out of the way. Yes, yeah, so there's a ram's horn snail look there at the back. That one's getting to work on there. Um, it's this mainly this front area here that I want to get to work on. Now I can remove that by hand, but it'll probably just come back if we haven't got the other sort of critters in there. And this tank is actually at a good stage now where we can add quite a few things. I can remove bits like the hair algae by hand, nice and simple, not a problem at all. Uh, but it's been really good to get some Amanos, I think, and a couple of Otosynclis, and that's just gonna keep this one looking great. Now the main reason that this is happening, of course, is because it's a new setup. There's bright lights, there's lots of aquasaur, there's loads of nutrients, there's a good amount of fish in here as well. So you're gonna get algae problems unless you're constantly cleaning, which as many of you know, I do not have time to do. Well MD, if you don't have time to do it, then why have you got so many tanks? Well, the idea being that all of them eventually get to a stage where you don't have to do anything. Like, so this, this tank here, this tank, this tank, this tank, this tank, I don't do anything to these apart from top up the water, that is it. Again, this one over here, which is the albino cherry barbs. Oh, also we've got all those uh, young little Pistagorama Hong Shloy there as well. Look, look at that one, beauty. Yeah, so this one doesn't need any attention either. And this one here with the Congo Tetra also doesn't need any attention. Now I'd say that one of the first things we want to do in a situation like this is remove as much as we can by hand. I mean, you don't have to spend all day doing it, but let's just suck out with a pipe or some brush or whatever tool you've got really, some of the hair algae that we can see, and then we can brush um, some of the smaller plants as well and just do a lot of manual removal. And then after that, we can add critters like uh, mono shrimp, snails, that kind of, well, I've got the snails in already, Otto sinkless and then we can add a bit of chemicals, but we, that should be a last resort really. And even then it should only be because it's a new setup because if it's not that, it will just keep coming back. And this one here is gonna be my first weapon of choice. Well, this should be super easy, just a case of twirling on all the areas that you can see all the string algae on. Look, look at that. I mean, a lot of it's actually just getting into the water column. That's okay, we can get that out with either a water change or just let the filter sort it out. Some of it's proper coming loose, look. Look at that, it's floating everywhere. That's exactly what we want though, we just, we don't want it there. The more that's there, it ten tends to mean the more that you, the more comes, you know what I mean? It's like algae generates algae sometimes. Look at that though, there's so much of it on my toilet brush. Nice. Well, that's as much as I'm gonna do for now, purely because the rest of the stuff would actually tear up some of the scape if I tried to get it off. That's what I'm gonna use the shrimp and the autosynclus for. And I'm talking about this stuff down here. So in amongst the glossy stigma, which is doing really well. Look, you can see it's actually growing and carpeting, which is no mean feat in a uh, low tech system like this. Remember, all we've got is a little internal filter and this budget little light. And glosso can be quite a hard one to get to, to carpet. Uh, you need nutrients and because of that you normally need CO2 and amazing lighting. So it's finding the right balance and I think once we can get some nice shrimp in there and some autos, it'll tidy this up quite a bit. They'll pick off any of the sort of dead ones that didn't convert well. But you can see all those teeny tiny little leaves there. That's all the new growth. And look, you can see runners. That's where I just accidentally ripped up a little bit of it as well. But all this weird sort of dusty green stuff, that's what we can leave to the shrimp and the autos. Now another tank that's currently going so, so well is the new Amazon tank. I mean, I showed it a bit in the, um, in the whole studio tour, but there's a few things going on at the moment. 
that I want to sort out or let you know what I'm trying to sort out. Now initially I was getting a little bit worried because I kept getting a murkiness coming back. Probably can tell it on camera just about but um, it, it's, yeah, it's a slight milkiness in the black area. So look, there's blackness. That black should be black, it's not. And I'm thinking, is that bacteria? Is it something like that? Keep testing the water now, because we're well over a week into the cycling, the, the in-fish cycling that I do of this tank. And there's everything's clear now. It's not coming back with any ammonia at all. We're all good. There's been so much beneficial bacteria going in. And the tank's got all these plants, got floating plants, everything's great. So why are we still getting this random milkiness? Now, honestly, couldn't work it out for the life of me. And then I came in this morning and saw something that I hadn't seen previously that was like a bit of an aha moment or eureka moment would be better. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, everything normal, everything normal, nothing strange or different. And then I looked over here, look, and you see all this sand? This all looks weird to me, like dug up. There we go. That's what it is. So inside this little section here is lots of wood that goes up and I think there's a lot of pockets in there. So the bristle nose have been digging out this section completely. Actually, I can see the tail of one of them, one of them just in there wiggling. Oh, I don't know if I can pick it up. No, I can't see it. But yeah, there's a, the bristle nose in here are quite big. They're like, they're like that chunky. I hope they'll get one on camera um, so I can add it to this. So they're going around in all these different areas and they're just digging it all up. Now that's obviously stuff that hasn't been filtered out. So all it's doing is redusting the water and that is absolutely fine. It's more of a relief than anything because there's nothing wrong with a bit of dust in the water column. It's not gonna hurt the fish at all. And it means that there's nothing wrong with the cycling process either. And another reason that makes me really happy is because I'm starting to question my own methods, which was silly of me because I've proven my own methods to myself anyway at least a lot of times I was starting to think this little internal filter I've got versus this amount of fish was too much because this is more fish than I've ever put in a tank before in terms of you know the big fish we've got in here with the electric blue Acara we've got some big chunky Colombian tetras as well and then a lot of the other tetras the plecos you know they're all creating mess and I was worried that I bit off more I could more than I could chew with the little internal filter and that's why we're getting bacteria die off which is what I thought the murkiness was and that's not what it is so we are good Now the angelfish tank right behind me here is another one that I need to do some work on. There's a little bit of fred algae, not too much, and also the moss needs a cutting as well. Everything else on it is good though. Yeah, like I've shown you guys some before, we've made some sort of improvements on this tank. I filled in this whole middle section because it was completely bare and I wasn't seeing any fish in it at all. So filled that in, but uh, I'm noticing here, look, look at this moss. Now this is the only algae pretty much in a whole tank. I've got no idea why it's happening there, but I don't like it and I want it gone. <laughs> Sorry fishies, um, it's not food time. <laughs> yeah, so just the same as before, get in there with that brush, twirl, twirl, twirl. I mean, that's it, it's actually done. I feel like I need to do a bit more trimming though, because if you ask me, this moss is getting too big. It's obviously harboring, look, look, there's loads of crud coming off of it. So I think if I just cut that back a bit, which would be a shame actually, because this Hydrocorp Japan's growing really nicely in there, but it needs doing, it needs doing. Oh, there's a bit more there. Right, let's get this all hacked up. It's going to go in other parts of the tank and settle. I don't mind that. Some of it will just, you know, get bigger and then you can pick it up by hand. And the other stuff will just, I don't know, get blown around the tank and get picked up by the filter. Again, both of those things are absolutely fine with me. So we've got all sorts of crud flying around all over the place at the moment and that doesn't matter like i said it's going to settle somewhere and the filter will pick it up as well we scooped up a lot of it most of it that i could the rest will be absolutely fine now there's more than you can see of these angels these are the brave ones these ones these four always stay out the front most of the others tuck in that little back corner there and in a gap at the back so um yeah i don't know why why are these ones so not scared <laughs> So 
you remember when I was here last week and we saw all those autos everywhere? I'm here for them. All of them? <laughs> uh, no, not all of them. <laughs> I don't need that many, actually. Um, I need like five per tank and I've got three tanks that need them. Nice. I don't need more than that because then they'll just run out of food otherwise, but yeah. five is just the right amount. I'm also after a few bristle nose and some um, Amanos. Yes. Amanos we can definitely do down there. You've got some. We've oh, there's tons them. of them. Yeah, there's hundreds down there. I'm actually filming my phone right now and it's dealing with the light better than my five grand camera. <laughs> <laughs> I might just do this in the future. It's an easier, um, easier option for you. But yeah, bristle noses will have goldens and normals, but they're spread out everywhere okay. just so that they get enough food. So we'll find some of those. Yeah, no problems at all. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I'm not looking for big ones. I just want the little ones because they're, they're mainly little of tanks. Yeah. All good? We can do that. Sweet. Doing a bit of tank cleaning there? Yeah, absolutely. Every day? Is that your main job here? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> we appreciate Danny very much. Danny's very knowledgeable as well. So everyone here is like massively knowledgeable of fish, aren't they? We're all That's fish geeks, yeah. Massive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we've got all of our fish, look, I've got them down there. I'm gonna divide them into the tanks that I want them to go in. I definitely want five Ottos and five Amanos over in the Neon Tetra tank. And also, I wanna put some of the bristle nose, in, oh yeah, a bristle nose over there as well. And then the three bristle noses over here. Yeah, just mix them up between those two tanks. They're the ones that actually need um, seeing to at the moment. I don't know why I'm rocking. What am I doing that for? <laughs> really annoying, isn't it? Okay, five Amanos, wait there and five Otto Sinclair's, wait there. We'll give them 20 minutes or so and then they'll be good to go in. Oh yeah, not to forget, lights off. So it's been 20 minutes, we, I forgot to put these in as well. Um, we've got the Plecos, two Plecos there, five Ottos and five Amanos. It's a good amount for that size tank. I'll actually probably only put one of those Plecos in or at least catch one out after I release them. And then over at the Angelfish tank, we've got pretty much the same. I've got two Plecos there, five Ottos, and well, I've got exactly the same, not pretty much, so they can go in there as well. But also, over here in the new Amazon Aquarium, I'm gonna put some Amanos and Ottos in here as well. This tank's getting really well established now, and uh, there's plenty of food for the Ottos and that kind of thing, so they'll do really well in here. And annoyingly, the water's all murky again because the bristle nose have been digging. I mean, eventually, they would have dug so much, there's no more sort of fine particles in the system. <laughs> But for now, let's just, just have to put up with it. <laughs> right, I'm gonna be releasing the fish straight from the bags. I know the store, I know how well everything's looked after, I know the amount of treatments to go into the water. If you don't know your store, trust it, whatever, don't do this, but for me, it's fine just to cut the bags and put the fish straight in, even though that water line's very high. I'll take some water out. Okay, we've got the bristle noses here first. These are the worst scissors ever. I couldn't have picked a more worse pair of scissors for this. Okay, guys, in you go. One, two, they'll have this clean in no time, and then I'll probably take one of them out. And now for the autos, and you go guys. Boop, boop, boop. And then finally, the Amanos as well. Look at that, straight away they're gonna get to work. We've got autos. There's this sort of powdery green stuff that's on the plants, and they're just gonna get to work on that straight away. Wouldn't be surprised if within a couple of days it's all completely gone, because I mean, look, straight away we've got a working Amano, <laughs> awesome. Okay, the same again on this side, Amanos. Fortunately, all of the angels are down here, so they're not gonna think that this is food. <laughs> Those Amanos would be toast otherwise. The two bristle nose. In you go. And then the five autos. Whoa, they flew out of there. There's one stuck. There you go. How'd you come? There you go. <laughs> Look at him. He's right there already. <laughs> Hello. No, that wasn't food, but now that they're in there, I can give you some food in a minute. Just let me, oh look, bristle nose going to work straight away. Good girl, I think that's a girl. Didn't see any bristles on it anyway. And of course, last but not least, we've got the Ottos and the Amanos for the Amazon Aquarium. Right, then let's get these all in. Now a good tip actually, for being able to get the Amanos in without them getting eaten, is to release them into your plants. You're not gonna see this, but there we go. They're already out and they're all over the moss there. Because the Colombian Tetra would go for them straight away, but now that they're on there, they're not at all, so that's good. And to be honest, Ah, the Otto Sinkless are going to be absolutely fine. The, I really need these scissors, don't I? Yeah, the Otto Sinkless are going to be absolutely fine anyway, just to be really slow. Is that all of them? Yes, we're all good. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but just in the background there on the wood um, is the Amanos. 
So that one's having a look. Went for it nowhere near fast enough. Yeah, they were gone before he was anywhere near. So they're all hiding amongst the plants there. Just pick at them all and they'll be absolutely fine. These fish aren't anywhere near quick enough. <laughs> I'm sure they could be in like open water, but where they've got so many places to hide, they'll be all good. Yeah, I just saw another one just scoot off again. Yeah, they're not even, yeah, yeah, no chance. Absolutely no chance. And what is quite cool as well, if you look down the side here, is we've already got roots coming down into this bottom section, which means that all the plants are growing great. And that's the main thing. If you can get your plants growing good, you're just, you're gonna win every time. I might put another fine filter pad in the, um, in the filter up there, just to take out some of this milkiness. Okay, filter off, picking it up. We'll probably sort of make the water a bit dirty. Yeah, oh, there's quite a lot of crud in there actually. This is good, we're taking it off then. Get some water to clean it in without picking any fish out. <laughs> I'll move that out of the way, do some water testing. And here's our sponge. Yeah, very grubby. That's good though. Now we're basically removing all the nastiness from that water. And actually I'll be using this water on my plants. It's so good for growing plants. Look at that, that's all nice nutrients. <laughs> okay, then this can go back in. And on the top, I've got that filter pad as well. And then, so the coarseness will catch most of it, and then the finer stuff on the top before it goes into the impeller. We're all good. Cool, but in the meantime, we've made a hell of a mess look, but it's all right, it'll clear so quickly now we've got that fine pad in there, because I didn't even have one before, because I didn't want the filter clogging up quickly. Just do a little tilt, and that should get rid of most of your uh, air bubbles. Just switch it on. Yes! <laughs> that is all going to get cleaned well quickly and look at that surface movement on the top now as well. So everything's flowing a bit better too. Another thing that I got whilst I was at the uh, fish shop was this. This is Salvinia. I've had it before but I got rid of it all for some reason which was stupid of me because I do love the plant. And that is going to go really nicely in quite a few. There's a lot there actually. Just pour off the liquid. Uh, there we go, and then we can put a little bit of it in each and every tank, and in no time that'll be like multiplied by a hundred. Here we go, look, little handful. That's way too much. Little handful in the top there. Perfect. And then we can do a little bit over here as well in the angelfish aquarium. You do not need a lot because it multiplies so fast. And then we could chuck the rest in there like that. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> the blue acaras are just looking like, we don't care about all these things, just feed us. So I've got um, red root floaters in here now. Some of them aren't doing too well, you see, so I took a lot of them out. Uh, we've got this one here, which is the uh, mini water lettuce, and then we've got the salvinia as well. So hopefully we get that all grown really good. So the fish shop is also part of a garden center. Now, as I was walking through, I found something else, which is gonna be really cool to do a project on. I'm talking about this thing here. So it's like a jug thing. <laughs> it's got like a tap on it. The idea is that you put all like uh, cocktails or something like that or fruit juices in it, turn a tap on and then it comes out. Well, I don't want to do that with it. I want to make this into a closed ecosystem tank. So look, it's got a nice top to it. It's uh, It wasn't cheap, but it wasn't expensive either. It's, it's made out of plastic or acrylic or whatever, but it's quite thick and heavy duty. And I think it'd be really cool to do something with it. So that's what's gonna be coming up soon in a build video and look out for that. And I also picked up to go inside the ecosystem. Oh, this isn't gonna work. There we go. Come on, come on, there we go. So I've got five really shrimp in there. Don't know if you can see them. We've got snails and we've got Amazon frog bit. I'll add some other stuff as well, but yeah, it'll be something simple because it can be closed and can't keep growing. Um, but yeah, it should be so cool. Right, that is it for this one. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button and then you might see some more stuff in the future, hopefully. See you again, bye.